For some, universities mean ivy-covered buildings or football games or many exams. But today, this university is all about transforming lives, building careers, and making a profound impact. Good morning. I am Dr. Jeremy Hafner, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at RIT. It is my pleasure to welcome you today as we kick off Commencement Weekend 2014 with this university celebration of our graduates in the class of 2014. Congratulations to all of you. And now I invite all of us to please stand for the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by Eli Bass, Hillel, Pro Hillel Pro Program Director for the Center of Religious Life. Blessed are you, O oh God, who enables all of us to come together to celebrate this moment of accomplishment and transition. God, we seek your blessing on these graduates. As they continue their journeys, may they continue in their process of discovery. Help them to grow in knowledge, character, and spirit. Thank you for the blessing of parents, family, and friends who have supported and nurtured these graduates to reach this moment. Thank you for the blessing of those who supported our graduates who cannot be here, but are here in spirit. Thank you for the blessing of the RIT community of peers, staff, professors, and administrators who have facilitated this experience. May our graduates' lives be enriched by the learning, connection, and rich experiences they created at RIT. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. Bass. And thanks also to soloist Dr. Keith Jenkins, associate professor in the College of Liberal Arts. And clearly with a very large fan club. And deaf performers Timothy Holmes, Malik Paris, Lauren Egan, and Nicholas Shaw for their performance of the national anthem. They were accompanied by Mr. Ed Shell, associate professor also from the College of Liberal Arts. I also thank the members of Eight Feet Measure who entertained us prior to the start of this ceremony, and the members of the RIT Pipe Band and Gates Keystone Club police pipes and drums who led our student procession into the facility. In 
In addition to the real-time captioning of this ceremony, we appreciate the fact that the ceremony will be enriched by the presence and expertise of our professional sign language interpreters and real-time captionists. We thank them for their dedication to their important work. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Brian Hall, Chair of Rochester Institute of Technology Board of Trustees. Brian? Good morning. On behalf of the RIT Board of Trustees, I would like to welcome all of you, graduates, families, friends, faculty, staff, and administration to the 2014 RIT Academic Convocation. This morning we kick off Commencement Weekend, a weekend of happiness and celebration, a weekend where the focus is on our graduates and all eyes are on the future, a weekend that is the culmination of years of hard work by graduates years of support by families and friends, and years of dedicated service by our faculty, staff, and administration. We are so proud of our graduates as they embark on the next chapter of their lives. We are proud of our graduates because they represent some of the best and brightest of college students at any university anywhere in the world. We are proud of our graduates because they will have a profound impact on the fields they have chosen, and most importantly, should have a profound impact on mankind. Graduates, let me leave you with these thoughts. RIT has been an important part of your life experience. You have grown, developed friendships, and great, gained great knowledge while you have been students here. You are now part of the history of RIT, and RIT will forever be part of you. Remember, this is your university. You are a graduate and an alum. I encourage you to stay connected to RIT. RIT can continue to make a difference in your life, and you can make a difference in RIT's future. I say this to you not as a trustee, but as a fellow alum. On behalf of the RIT Board of Trustees, congratulations to all of our graduates, and thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. There are several individuals I would like to recognize. First. Members of the Board of Trustees, we thank them for their unfailing support of our students. And along with them, we are also pleased to welcome RIT Vice Presidents and other administrators here with us today. With me here on stage are Dr. Heath Boyce Pardee, Interim Senior Vice President for Student Affairs, and Dr. Kevin McDonald, Associate Provost and Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. Also. Today's mace bearer, Dr. Michael Laver, Associate Professor in the Department of History in the College of Liberal Arts and Chair of the RIT Academic Senate. Trustees, Vice Presidents, and other administrators, Heath, and Kevin, and Michael, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Other members of the platform party will be introduced throughout the course of the program. Faculty. Faculty are the heart and soul of any university. The RIT faculty are among the best of the best, and we take great pride in the excellence and expertise each faculty member brings to his or her classroom. The faculty are tireless in their dedication to their students, going above and beyond expectations both in and out of the classroom. They are not only teachers, 
They are also friends, cheerleaders, advisors, mentors, and role models. Graduates and members of the platform party, trustees, staff, family members, and friends, please join me in recognizing those most responsible for what you, the graduates, have learned and accomplished, the RIT faculty, whom I now ask to stand and be recognized. Faculty, thank you for a job well done. Now, the faculty couldn't be as successful without one other great resource here at, that uni at this university, and that is the staff who work so incredibly hard to support us, both faculty and students, in reaching our goals. Although we do not say it far often enough, we thank you and appreciate your efforts as well. To the staff, thank you. While RIT alumni can be found all over the world, we are proud to have a significant number of alums in our audience, faculty and staff, parents, grandparents, and other friends. We thank you for your support, and we ask the alumni in the audience to stand and be recognized. Alumni. Each year, RIT recognizes members of the faculty who exemplify teaching excellence through a series of awards. A description of each award can be found in your program. And I'm going to introduce the 2013-2014 recipients of these awards, and I ask that they stand when their names are read, and please remain standing. Please hold your applause until all the recipients have been introduced. The recipients of the Eisenhardt Award for Outstanding Teaching, RIT's highest teaching award, are Dr. Kirsten Condry, Associate Professor in the College of Liberal Arts, Dr. Carl Lutzer, Professor in the College of Science. The recipient of the Richard and Virginia Eisenhardt Provost Excellence in Teaching Award is Dr. Sean Hansen, Assistant Professor in the Saunders College of Business. The recipient of the Outstanding Teaching Award for non-tenure track faculty is Mr. Jonathan Weissman, adjunct professor in the B. Thomas Golisano College of Computing and Information Sciences. The recipients of the Trustee Scholarship Award are Dr. Manuela Campanelli, professor in the College of Science, and Dr. Jennifer Schneider, professor in the College of Science, Applied Science and Technology. And finally, a very special recognition. I present R. Roger Remington, Vignelli Distinguished Professor of Design in the School of Design in the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. Professor Remington has been a renowned faculty member here at RIT for 50 years. A pi A pioneer. A pioneer in the field of design education, Roger's lifelong commitment to scholarship and creativity is legendary. He is an expert in design education and a leader in the history of American graphic design. In recognition and appreciation for his countless contributions, the RIT Board of Trustees bestowed upon him earlier this month the first ever trustees Lifetime Achievement Award for Scholarship in the area of graphics and graphic design. Please join me in a warm congratulations of all these outstanding teacher scholars. Thank you. 
An explanation of the regalia our graduates and faculty wear can be found in your program. At today's ceremony and the college commencement ceremonies later today and tomorrow, you will notice that some students wear, are wearing yellow cords over their gowns. These students are graduating cum laude, meaning they have earned at least a 3.4 grade point average. Students graduating magna cum laude have achieved at least a 3.6 grade point average, and those graduating summa cum laude have achieved a grade point average of at least 3.8 out of a 4.0 scale. You will also see students wearing orange sashes over their gowns. These sashes indicate members of the RIT Honors Program who are graduating this weekend. We congratulate all these high performing who are graduating this weekend. <laughs> you will also notice students wearing other sashes, cords and medallions. They may be athletes, have studied abroad, been named outstanding undergraduate scholars, members of honorary societies, student government, or fraternities and sororities. We are proud, very proud of these students and their commitment to enriching the community of RIT. Let's give them a round of applause. Four years ago, RIT created the Rochester City Scholars Program, which was designed for high-achieving Rochester City students who are selected based on their academic achievements, leadership potential, and desire to make a difference in the RIT and surrounding community. One of the goals for the program was to provide highly qualified students with the opportunity to obtain a college education, something they may not have had the opportunity opportunity to do so otherwise. Today marks the graduation of the very first class of Rochester City Scholars, and we are so proud of them and their accomplishments, and we look forward to great things from them in the future. Please join me in a warm recognition of our Rochester City Scholars. And now, it's my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Paul Dara, who is completing his term as president of the student government. Tall Paul, as he is known, has been an enthusiastic and effective student leader and worked tirelessly to ensure that student voices are heard at all levels of the university. We thank him for his work, and we wish him well in the future. Tall Paul? sitting right now. Think back to the last time you were sitting in the field house with your parents, family, and friends. That was during your freshman orientation. Now I'm not planning on telling you about how proud I am of you guys or what good things you'll do in that place they call the real world. We already know that you'll rock it. <laughs> You've made it through four five, six, and for a few of you guys, even seven years. <laughs> You've proven that you can do great things at RIT and that no matter what you do after graduation, you will inspire us back here at RIT. Though, I want you to take a step back and think about your first year here. Now think about how much you've changed, the friends you've made, and, well, let's be honest, all the lessons you learned the hard way while you were learning, growing, and exploring. And so I know all these might be different for you guys, but I know we share a few similar memories. Like a couple of years ago when the campus managed to survive by hiding under a desk from an umbrella. <laughs> well, I gotta hand it to you guys. We started a national movement with a few other colleges following our lead. But there's also so many other memories from an all-night LAN party that people went to to cheering on our men's and women's hockey team. But one of, I think, our favorite memories was created this year by an email that was sent out by Dr. Dessler. 
And in the famous words of Dr. Dessler, most students know the weather at RIT is controlled by the Sentinel sculpture located in front of the Eastman Hall through control center access through secret tunnels linking the dormitories to the academic buildings. Now I know that this was not only the most read message center email ever, but that there was a promise made by Dr. Dessler afterwards. Do you know what that promise was? <laughs> that any graduating senior would be given a personal tour of the underground tunnels that lead from the dorm side to the academic side, which would have kept you warm all freshman year by our one and only Dr. Dessler. You can find him over by the Sentinel after this. <laughs> RIT has provided us with some of our greatest memories, friends, and experiences. And as you head out into that a uh, place they call the real world. I want you to remember that I'm waiting to see all of you back here at Brick City Homecoming to tell us all about your new friends, memories, and experiences. With that, I wish you the best of luck. And just remember, this is not your last hoorah at RIT. I'll see you all soon. Sorry, and one last uh, introduction. As we're uh, leaving, I'd like to, as I'm leaving, sorry, I'd like to introduce, um, sorry, as you leave here after graduation, your relationship with RIT does not end, but rather it changes as you join the ranks of the RIT alumni. With us this morning, representing an RIT alumni is the president of the RIT Alumni Association and a member of our board of trustees, Mr. Ricardo A. Bengas. Good morning and congratulations. Thank you, Paul. Members of the class of 2014, welcome to the RIT Alumni Association. Your status as an RIT graduate positions you as a part of a very talented and respected group around the world. As the first class to graduate under the new semester system, you will hold a spe special designation. Nonetheless, we all share the common bond of being RIT alumni. This dynamic network of over 114,000 individuals demonstrates the value of, our, of an RIT degree daily. You can seek and find RIT Tigers in over 140 countries and in all 50 states. You will easily find them at more than 600 events and volunteer opportunities the RIT Alumni Association sponsors every year or like me, you may have colleagues and neighbors that are honored to be RIT alumni. You join a strong and proud community that is strengthened with the time, the talent, and the treasure that each dedicates to that society. Through your connection to the RIT Alumni Association, your relationship with RIT will last a lifetime. I urge you to maintain and strengthen that connection. It will be with you wherever you go and draw you back to RIT and your RIT family the rest of your life. Use your RIT education well, reap the benefits of your hard work, and remember that you now go into the world to represent the phenomenal value that, of RIT to those who will follow you. On behalf of the Rochester Institute of Technology Alumni Association, I hereby declare the class of 2014 to be life members of the RIT Alumni Association, and as such, charge you to remain loyal, dedicated, and enthusiastic supporters of the university that sets you forth on this 23rd day of May 2014. We are proud to have you among us. Congratulations. Thank you, Ricardo. 
Next, I am happy to introduce RIT President Dr. William W. Dessler. Dr. Dessler is an international authority on high power microwave sources and advanced accelerator concepts. He earned his bachelor's degree from Stevens Institute of Technology and his PhD from Cornell University, both degrees in the field of applied physics. Please join me in a warm welcome for President Bill Dessler. Paul, I will sign all of my speech. <laughs> so happily for all of you, this speech will be short. <laughs> First of all, congratulations to all of the graduates and your families and friends. Today is a special day for all of you and the beginning of new adventures of all kinds. Whether you are going to start a new job or are still looking for a job or are going on to graduate school, a new life and a very big world is waiting for you. I remember when Rebecca and I first came to RIT years ago. We moved away from our many friends, and a comfortable life to start a new adventure in Rochester. We were, as I'm sure you are, excited and nervous about the new life that we were starting. In time, of course, we found new friends here, and we now think of Rochester and RIT as home. We did learn a few things on our own adventure, and some might be helpful to you as you begin your new lives. First, you don't have to give up your friends or your family as you embark upon this new journey. In fact, they will be your strongest source of support during this time of change. Second, what you do and how much you enjoy it will be more important than how much money you make. And if you enjoy your work, you will be more successful in your careers. Third, Make friends both inside and outside of your work environment. You will need both. Fourth, find ways to contribute to your communities and give back when you can. The world is not a perfect place, but you can make it better through your good works. Fifth, I know that many of you have found jobs or have been accepted 
to graduate school. Many of you, however, are still looking for jobs. And to you, I can say, I have been there. When I finished graduate school, I sent out more than 100 letters to employers. And I received back not one encouraging response. In the end, however, I found a job. <laughs> and you will too. So don't despair. Finally, stay in touch with RIT and the friends and mentors who have helped you here. Come back and visit us often and wear your orange and brown with pride. We are so proud of you and of what you have become. And we will follow you in your new lives with real pride and interest. Finally, go Tigers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, RIT graduates, we are so pleased to welcome a special guest to our celebration today, Nobel laureate Dr. William Daniel Phillips. Dr. Phillips has, as you might expect, a most impressive list of achievements, a record of innovation and leadership in scientific research that is indeed inspiring. A native of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, he has been passionate about science all of his life, deciding as a young child it would be his life's work. Bill received a Bachelor of Science degree in physics from Juniata College, following in the footsteps of his parents, who, along with his siblings, also attended Juniata. He earned a PhD from another IT institution with an M at the beginning. We don't talk about much here. <laughs> and after two years as a Weizmann postdoctoral fellow at MIT, oh, I said it, didn't I? Hmm. <laughs> he joined the staff of the National Institute of Standards and Technology, then the National Bureau of Standards, in 1978. Dr. Phillips is currently leader of the Laser Cooling and Trapping Group in the Quantum Measurement Division of NIST's Physical Measurements Laboratory and a distinguished university professor at the University of Maryland. The research group he leads at NIST has been responsible for de developing some of the main techniques now used for laser cooling and cold atom experiments in laboratories around the world. Dr. Phillips' work has been recognized and honored widely. He's a fellow of the American Physical Society and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, a fellow and honorary member of the Optical Society of America, and a member of the National Academy of Sciences and the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. He is the recipient of the Gold Medal of the U.S. Department of Commerce, the Michelson Medal of the Franklin Institute, the Shallow Prize of the American Physical Society, and the Service to America Medal Career Achievement Award. And in 1997, just to top it off, he shared the Nobel Prize in Physics for developing of methods to cool and trap atoms with laser light. Now, after hearing that long list of credentials, I can understand why you might be concerned that you're about to sit through a stuffy science presentation. <laughs> but that's only because you've never heard my friend Bill Phillips speak. Be ready for anything. Now let's give a warm RIT welcome to Dr. William Daniel Phillips. Thank you. President Dessler, platform party, members of the faculty, honored guests, and most important, graduating students of the Rochester Institute of Technology. Could somebody turn the lights on so I can see those wonderful students? Thank you. <laughs> you, 
You are why we are here, and I'm talking to you. This is a wonderful day, a joyous occasion, a time for celebration, a time for fond memories, a time to look forward. You are receiving degrees from one of this great country's great universities, and you deserve to be proud of your accomplishments, and I am happy and honored to congratulate you for what you have achieved. I know you are eager to get on with this happy ceremony, to rejoice with your fellow students, and to celebrate with family and friends. But first, you have to listen to me give this commencement address. And I know how you feel. I've been to a lot of commencement ceremonies and heard a lot of commencement addresses, and they have been almost uniformly forgettable. <laughs> there was one exception. The renowned cellist Yo-Yo Ma once gave a commencement address in which he advised all of the graduates that like every musician, they must find their voice. What a musician does is give their own unique interpretation to well-known compositions, and the students, as well as all of us, have to find our unique ways through the familiar life experiences. Really good advice. But what made it memorable was that Yo-Yo Ma played his cello. It was awesome. So when Bill Dessler asked me to address you today, I was wondering, could I pull off the same trick? Could I, as an experimental physicist, do experiments in the same spirit as Yo-Yo Ma played his cello? We shall see. <laughs> you ready to have some fun? As a physicist, what I do is I make things really, really cold. Why? Because when things are hot, it means the atoms and molecules that make up the stuff are moving around really fast. The molecules in the air in this room are moving at the speed of sound, about 300 meters per second. It's really hard to measure things that are moving that fast. And so what we want to do is we want to take a gas and cool it down so that the atoms in that gas are moving more slowly so we can study them and measure them better. <laughs> so courtesy of this great university, I've got some really cold stuff. In here is liquid nitrogen. Nitrogen is the main constituent of the air. That means this is liquefied air. Unless you've been in a low temperature physics laboratory, this is the coldest stuff you've ever seen. It is so cold that compared to it, the floor on which I am standing, in fact, everything in this great hall is bur burning hot. What would happen if you took cold water and poured it out onto a red hot stove? It would boil, and that's what's going on here. This stuff is really, really cold. And if you've got something that cold, well, why not use it to cool down a gas? So that's the whole idea of what I'm going to show you now. So here I have a container of liquid nitrogen. Let me just uh, put a little bit more in here to uh, top it up. And here I have what I thought was going to be a very common container for hot gas, or as we say in the Washington area where I come from, hot air. But this is. <laughs> This is not at all a common container. This is a tiger balloon. <laughs> OK. So we've got the tiger balloon filled with hot air. Let's stuff it into this bait bucket filled with liquid nitrogen to cool down the air to make the atoms and molecules move more slowly. Oh, yeah, this is so much fun. Absolutely. OK, good. So now, while that's cooling down, let's see what I can do to uh, show you how cold this stuff really is. Here, I have 
a Dewar flask. It's just a fancy name for a thermos bottle. It's been sitting out in the, uh, the room all morning. It is, compared to the liquid nitrogen, burning hot. Imagine that you took a metal pail and heated it up in a fire until it was glowing red hot, and then took some cold water and poured it into the bucket. It would boil, and that's what's happening here. Don't try this at home. <laughs> so while that's boiling away, cooling down the inside of the doer, let's cool down some more gas. Because after all, if you're going to do an experiment, you want to make sure you've got plenty of stuff to do it with, so we want to cool down some more hot gas. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> okay, so now let's go over here. The, the boiling has subsided. Uh, let me just top it up a little bit. So we got plenty of, of nitrogen in here. Now, here we have a nice fresh flower. Nice. <laughs> it's been sitting out at room temperature. That means compared to the nitrogen, it's red hot. What would happen if you took a fireplace poker, heat it up in the, the fire until it's glowing red, and then plunge it into a bucket of cold water? It would make the water boil. And that's what's going on here. So I look in there and I see the nitrogen is boiling away, cooling down the flour. So while that's happening, let's cool down some more gas. Because, of course, the reason we're doing this is to make the atoms and molecules in the gas move more slowly so that we can measure them better. And we've got this incredibly cold stuff. So we're going we're gonna to cool down the gas to make the atoms and molecules move more slowly. Ah, I'm going to stuff it in. You know, it's getting a little tight in there. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Now, let's come back to the flour. The boiling has subsided. That means the flour is cooled down to the temperature of the liquid nitrogen. This flour is so cold that when I pull it out, it is frozen so hard, I can crush it like it was made out of glass. This stuff is really, really cold. And if you've got something that cold, well, you know, why not use it? Why not use it to cool down your, your gas uh, to make the atoms and molecules move more slowly so that you can uh, study them better? That's what the whole idea is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's still a little room in here. Okay, fantastic. Get down there. Okay, there we go. Now, let's see, what else can I do to show you how cold this stuff is? Here we go. A rubber band, nice stretchy rubber band. I'm going to take the rubber band and dunk it into this container of liquid nitrogen. Now, like anything that goes into the liquid nitrogen, it's making the nitrogen boil. It doesn't take too long. The boiling has stopped. The rubber band is down to the temperature of the liquid nitrogen. When I take it out, it is so stiff, I can break it like it was a dry twig. But all I have to do is warm it up in my hands, and it's a nice stretchy rubber band again. This stuff is really, really cold. <laughs> and if you've got something that cold, well, and fortunately, we got plenty of tiger balloons. <coughs> then why not use it to cool down your gas so that the atoms and molecules will move more slowly so that you can measure them better? Okay. Let's see what else we got. Racquetball. 
nice, bouncy racquetball. Let's see what happens when we put the racquetball in the liquid nitrogen. Now, how cold is this stuff? You know, when we measure the temperature of things, like the, the, uh, the air outside, we usually use a scale like the Fahrenheit scale or the Celsius scale. On a cold day, it might go down to zero Celsius. On a really cold day, it might go down to below zero Fahrenheit. Physicists don't like these negative temperatures, and so we use a different temperature scale where zero is the coldest possible temperature you could ever have. So this is called the absolute or Kelvin scale. On that scale, room temperature is about 300 degrees. Ice melts at 273 degrees. Dry ice has a temperature of 195 degrees on that scale. And the coldest air temperature ever measured any place on the face of the Earth, someplace in Antarctica in the winter, was 185 degrees above absolute zero. This stuff, this stuff, which is so cold that it, it boils when you pour it out on the ground. This stuff is 77 degrees above absolute zero. Incredibly cold. For most of you, the coldest stuff you've ever seen. And so it seems perfectly reasonable if you want to cool down a gas to make the atoms and molecules move more slowly, why not use it? The coldest stuff you've ever seen. But some of you, I perceive, have noticed there was something fishy going on here, that the volume of the balloons that went into this, uh, this bucket was greater than the volume of the bucket. And the reason is that these balloons are as flat as pancakes. These things are Frisbees. These things are... Whoa! <laughs> now, how many, how many balloons did I put in? Five. And how many balloons did I take out? Five. And they were all tiger balloons, right? How many yellow balloons did I put in? Hmm. How many... Uh, how many blue balloons did I put in? How many red balloons did I put in? I, <laughs> I, I could have put in balloons into, these, uh, into this bucket until the cows came home because what happened was that the air didn't go out of these balloons. As you can see, they've reinflated. What happened was the air condensed. It turned into a liquid or a solid or stuck to the inside of the, uh, of the balloon and we didn't have a gas anymore and that just won't do because we want to study our atoms in a pristine way, not stuck on to other atoms, not stuck on to a container. And so we had to develop another way of doing it and I wish I had the time to tell you that story because it's an incredible story. How we use light to shine on the atoms and push on them in such a way as to make them slow down. And not only did it work, it worked better than anybody thought it would. And we eventually got the temperature of a gas down below one millionth, one millionth of a degree above absolute zero. That is a hundred million times colder than the temperature of liquid nitrogen, which is, oh dear, it's out. Fortunately, I've got more. <laughs> which, is, which is the coldest stuff that most of you have ever seen. It boils when you pour it out on the ground. Oh, I almost forgot. The racquetball. The racquetball. Let's... You remember how nice and bouncy the racquetball was? broke like it was made out of China. Incredibly cold stuff, but we got gases a hundred million times colder than that. And using that idea, we have been able to make clocks that only would gain or lose a few seconds in the age of the universe. So this turned out to be good for something. But now I want you to ask yourself, <laughs> yeah, you thought it was just fun, and it is. But it was good for something too. But let me ask you this. You may be asking yourself this. Where do you keep the coldest stuff in the universe? You can't keep it in a cold bottle because you've seen what happens if you try to put a gas in a cold bottle. It just condenses. 
you can't keep it in a hot bottle because the bottle would heat it up. So you've got to keep it in a bottle that is something that has no material in it to hold, uh, to hold your atoms. We use a magnetic bottle. Do you remember when you were kids and you played with magnets? And do you remember the first time you held two magnets in your hand and felt that they were pushing each other apart without touching? Isn't that amazing? I'm still amazed by that. We're going to use that, the fact that we can push on things without touching them, to hold our atoms because it turns out that our atoms are little tiny magnets. And here I've got a big magnet and here I've got a little magnet representing my atom and I can feel that the big magnet is pushing up on the little magnet and if I let go of it, it should float right here. And when I let go of it, it doesn't float because it flips over and gets attracted to the big magnet. And if you ever tried this when you were a kid and you had a bunch of magnets, that's what always happens. It never works. But you learned something else when you were playing with toys as a kid. You learned that if you spin a top, it won't fall over. And it turns out that there are atoms are spinning magnets, and so I've spun this thing, and now I'm going to lift it to the place where the magnetic field will hold it up. And it's not quite working. And the reason it's not working is your fault. <laughs> and the reason it's your fault is because each one of you is putting out about 100 watts of heat, and uh, that's enough to warm this magnet up just a little bit, and that makes it just a little bit weaker. So in order to compensate for that, I've taken a little bit of weight off, and we're going to try it again. And see if this works. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> and it turns out that it's useful too, but why did I do it? I mean, what point do, did all of those wonderful fun tricks have in this commencement ceremony where I'm supposed to send you off to the rest of your lives with some message, some profound words of wisdom? In that long ago graduation ceremony where Yo-Yo Ma played the cello, his message was find your voice. A great message. But what is my message? It's simply this. I'm having fun and I hope you will too. <laughs> Now, maybe you were expecting something more profound, something along the lines of how your status as RIT graduates gives you a special responsibility, as Bill Dessler said, to make a positive difference in your communities near and far and in the lives of those you touch. And of course, that is true. But I think that you are both smart enough and good enough to have figured that out already. What you might have forgotten is that you can do all that while having fun. Doing science as I do is a lot of fun. In fact, doing anything that you love to do is a lot of fun. And one of the most important things you have learned in your time at RIT is how to have fun by exercising your mind. You've learned how to learn. I hope that you are going to use what you learned here at RIT to make the world a little better. And to do that, you will need to keep on learning. One of my favorite sayings is that a good day is a day when I learn something new and interesting. And as RIT graduates, you can make nearly every day a good day. You have that wonderful, inexpressibly exciting opportunity to take part in the life of the mind. No matter what you studied in your years here, no matter whether your career takes you in the path of those studies or not, you have opened the door to learning and that door can never be closed. So my message to you today is have fun. Have fun with your mind. Read, learn, do. You have what it takes. Your education may not be the ticket to a financially successful career connected to your field of study. That will depend on chance and circumstance as well as on your own desires and your hard work and your ability. 
but your education is surely the ticket to a life of fun in learning and of using that learning to make a difference. Today is a day for celebration. I'm sure that today you will happily follow my advice to have fun, and you should. But what about tomorrow and the rest of your lives? The days to come may be filled with uncertainty. For what it's worth, that uncertainty is part of the human condition, and you're in good company. It's also a position of tremendous adventure. But as graduates of RIT, you are in even better company. You are in the company of those who have learned how to learn, who have access to the great adventures of the mind. You will celebrate and have fun today, but the real fun will be in what you continue to learn for the rest of your lives. Good luck. Only at RIT, only at RIT do we cram every possible learning opportunity to the very last. <laughs> now, if only we had been organized enough to give a quiz one after following. <laughs> Thank you again, Dr. Phillips, for being with us today. It has truly been a pleasure for you to share this important day with our graduates and their family. It is now time to turn to the most important reason for all our being here today, the celebration of our graduating students and the official conferral of degrees. We're going to begin with the hooding of our PhD candidates from the following programs, computing and information sciences, microsystems engineering, imaging science, color science, sustainability, and astrophysical sciences and technology. I call forward Dr. Hector Flores, Dean of Graduate Studies, to present the candidates for the Doctorate of Philosophy degree. Hector? Good morning, and thank you, Dr. Hefner. I just got some wonderful ideas for next year's hooding ceremony, which uh, I hope we can discuss later. But for today, uh, this is the script. It is my pleasure to present the candidates for Doctorate of Philosophy degree in Microsystems Engineering. I will introduce each candidate in his or her advisor, and I will read the title of each candidate's dissertation. Rupak Banerjee, dissertation, liquid water transport in the reactant channels of a PEM fuel cell, Dr. Satish Kandlikar, advisor. Preeti Gopalan, Dissertation, Investigation of Water Droplet Dynamics in PEM, Proton Exchange Membrane Fuel Cell Gas Channels. Dr. Satish Kandlikar, Advisor. <laughs> Burak Bele, Dissertation, Reduction of Line Edge Roughness, LER, in Interference Like Large Field Lithography, Dr. Bruce Smith, advisor. <laughs> Jirachai Getpri Chersawas, dissertation, low power, low voltage electroosmotic actuator for an implantable micropumping system intended for drug delivery applications, Dr. David Burkholder, advisor. Meg Shaw, dissertation, thermal analysis and dielectric spectral characteristics of polyionic liquids towards exploration in their utility in capacitive electrochemical devices. Dr. Thomas Smith, advisor.
I now call the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degrees in Computing and Information Sciences. Yamin Al Musa, dissertation, The Impact of Adaptation Delays on Routing Protocols for Mobile Ad Hoc Networks, Manets. Dr. Andres Kwasinski, advisor. <laughs> Suhair Al Sheri, dissertation, Toward Effective Access Control Using Attributes in Pseudo Role. Dr. Rajendra Raj, advisor. Sharif Azari, dissertation, Grassman Learning for Recognition and Classification, Dr. Andreas Sabakis, advisor. <laughs> Hightout Du, dissertation, Probabilistic Modeling and Inference for Obfuscated Network Attack Sequences, Dr. Chanshi J. Yang, advisor. I now call forward the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Sustainability. Erin Ryan, Dissertation, an Ecological Framework to Assess Sustainability Impacts for Evolving Consumer Electronic Product System, Dr. Kelly Babbitt, Advisor. Chelsea Bailey, dissertation, Sustainability Implications of Lithium-Ion Battery Disposal Pathways and Treatment Options, Dr. Callie Babbitt and Dr. Gabriel Gostet, advisors. <laughs> Michelle Go, dissertation, Sustainability Informed Management of End-of-Life Photovoltaics, Assessing Environmental and Economic Trade-offs of Collection and Recycling. Dr. Gabriel Gostet, advisor. <laughs> Shua Wong, dissertation, Managing End-of-Life Lithium-Ion Batteries in Environmental and Economic Assessment. Dr. Gabriel Gostet, advisor. I now call forward the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Astrophysical Sciences and Technology, Color Science, and Imaging Science. David Principe, Dissertation, Multi-Wavelength Studies of Young Stars and Their Circumstellar Disks, Dr. Joel Kastner, Advisor. <laughs> Susan Farnan. Dissertation, Designing Pictorial Stimuli for Perceptual Image Difference Experiments. Dr. Mark Fairchild, advisor. <laughs> James Albano, Dissertation, Spectral Target Detection Using Physics-Based Modeling in a Manifold Learning Technique. Dr. David Messenger, advisor. May Victoria Casterline, Dissertation, Physics-Based Surface Energy Model Optimization for Water Bodies in Cold Climates Using Visible and Calibrated Thermal Infrared Imagery. Dr. Carl Salbaja, Advisor. <laughs> David Nilosek, Dissertation, Analysis and Exploitation of Automatically Generated Scene Structure from Aerial Imagery. Dr. Carl Salbaggio, advisor. <laughs> Zhao Wei Sun, dissertation, automatic 3D building detection and modeling from airborne LiDAR point clouds. Dr. Carl Salbaggio, advisor. <laughs> Yu Ji Kui, dissertation, a dynamic magnetic resonance imaging MRI Phantom based on electric field induced residual dipolar couplings. Dr. Joe Hornack, advisor. <laughs> Alvaro Jose Rojas Arciniegas, 
dissertation towards the control of electrophotographic based three dimensional printing, image based sensing, and modeling of surface defects. Dr. Marcos Esterman, advisor. Santosh Suresh, dissertation, a framework for near real time feature extraction from the atmospheric imaging assembly images of the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Dr. Roger Duby, advisor. <laughs> Kunal Vaidya, <laughs> dissertation, multimodal imaging and characterization of biofilms. Kunal Vaidya's advisor, Dr. Maria Aguera, is teaching in Peru, will not be able to attend. John Carreca, imaging science, graduate program director, will act on her behalf. This concludes the presentation of candidates for a doctoral philosophy degree. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Hector, and congratulations to all our PhD graduates. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the 2013-2014 college delegates representing each of our nine colleges, the Golisano Institute for Sustainability and the Center for Multidisciplinary Studies here at RIT, as well as two of our global campuses, the American University at Kosovo and RIT Croatia. Students at AUK will celebrate their commencement Wednesday in Kosovo, students at RIT Croatia will celebrate their commencement next Saturday. We have one other global campus, RIT Dubai. The students will celebrate their graduation on June 2nd. But we have some RIT Dubai students here with us today. Would you all from RIT Dubai please stand so that we can applaud your accomplishments. RIT Dubai students. Now, in your program, you will find a list of undergraduate and graduate college delegates. They are selected to represent their fellow graduates during the official conferral of degrees a bit later in the program. We, Dr. Dessler, Dr. Boyce Pardee, Dr. Flores, and I had a wonderful luncheon with all the undergraduate and graduate delegates in, the late, in late February with the almost impossible goal of selecting one undergraduate delegate and one graduate delegate to give a student address. While each will address the graduates at their individual college ceremonies, we selected undergraduate college delegate Kimbria Lake Blake from the College of Science to deliver today's to deliver today's undergraduate student address. She will be followed by graduate delegate Ehab Mardini from the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. Please join me in a warm welcome for Kimbria Blake to the podium. Kimbria. takes one trip to the grocery store, or even just five minutes of watching TV to observe what I like to call the epidemic of sameness. What I mean by this is the oppressive attitude that everyone needs to act the same, look a certain way, and have identical interests to be accepted by society, or even ironically to have an identity. All this absurdity brings to mind the analogy of trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. The only way to achieve this fit is to change the very essence of the square peg, shave down its corners and smooth out its angles until it becomes something it was not made to be, a round peg. This is precisely what happens when we change for society rather than showing society unabashedly what our true essence is. When asked to speak at commencement, I was told to choose a topic that would resonate with the RIT community. I began asking myself what made me a successful student at RIT, or even why I chose to attend RIT in the first place. 
Well, there were several things. The one that stood out the most was I could finally be exactly who I was. I was no longer afraid to hide my geekiness or my weird interest to avoid teasing remarks. Without the weight to conform, I became a more confident, successful individual. I believe this holds true for most of our graduating class. Whether you like to spend a week shooting zombies with Nerf guns, talking in puns for hours with your friends, having epic gaming parties, attending Toracon, building robots, creating amazing works of art, singing, spending time geeking out about your truest passions, mine was bacteria, my license plate, S. aureus, displays this fact, <laughs> or even just being a college-age kid, the RIT community, of which we are a vital part of, embraced it. As we are about to leave the safeness of RIT, I encourage all of you to, to remain true to yourselves. Every single, wonderfully unique person has something valuable to offer. Ellen Bryson was able to express these sentiments much better than I. Our uniqueness alone is enough to justify our special place in the world. But even more, our destiny insists we use our gifts to show others who they really are or show them what, in an ideal world, they could become. It may shock them at first, but deep down, we open their eyes to greater possibilities. Perhaps our uniqueness is the very key to success everyone is always looking for. I hope our class will be the seeds of change to this epidemic of sameness. I would like to, to take the time to thank the parents who embraced and fostered our idiosyncrasies, the professors who saw our potential, friends who were there for support, and the administration who provided the essential backbone for RIT students to thrive. They are the chief reason that we are sitting here today, about to graduate, and are prepared to embark into the world, ready to do amazing things. You visit RIT for the first time, and the first thing you see is that nice dreamy slogan, dream big. Then you think it's either one of those schools that uses catchy slogan that attracts all students, or it's one of those unique and really good universities who have complete credibility of their high standards. I came from Syria to study in the United States under the description alien. Unfortunately, the treatment in the airport didn't help me taking that image off of my head. But ever since I arrived to RIT, I never had a single day feeling that I was treated so, thanks to the American hospitality and to RIT community, in which I found friends, close friends, and sometimes I found really true family some of them were friends, some of them were from the faculty. And the fact that I was studying 3D animation here, eventually I found some really good joy in being called as alien. Because the way I thought about it is that I have big eyes maybe, probably more hair. <laughs> so ever since I started in RIT, my big plan was study well, work hard, learn and teach as much as possible get an internship, and hopefully get a co-op, and then graduate, and later on, find a professional job, and hopefully end up teaching, because I like teaching. I ended up working for two years as a teacher assistant. I had an internship, then I had a co-op. In the meantime, I had the honor of being the animator of an amazing feature documentary film called The Intrepid, which was aired on WXXI. I worked as an adjunct teacher in RIT for two semesters, and while graduating soon, I'm expecting some really good news from a good company. All of those achievements took place in my life ever since I came to RIT, but I didn't accomplish what I accomplished because I worked hard. It happened only because of the great support and guidance 
of the highly dedicated team of creative and amazing faculty members of the School of Film and Animation and the great dedication from the staff of CIAS. I owe it all to them. I'm not exceptional. They are. Malcolm Spall, Stephanie Maxwell, Howard Lister, and Tom Gasek. You showed me the path to success. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. SOFA faculty, my inspiring peers, Raymond Magdat Suhail, my grad and undergrad friends, you were all the shining stars that lit my path. And Mark Reich, on behalf of me and the 3D students, I want to say that you are an awesome teacher, a great friend, and a true brother. And on behalf of everybody, I can tell you that you have cute kids. <laughs> I want to thank the Fulbright Scholarship for giving me this lifetime opportunity of experiencing RIT. I want to thank my family for respecting my hobbies and understanding my crazy artistic ambitions. And I want to thank my very patient wife for understanding how much time I had to spend away from her to work on my projects. Dr. Dessler, Dr. Hefner, and Dr. Hector, meeting you was an honor, and knowing you was a great pleasure. If you are in RIT today, success is yours. But remember to work hard and dream big. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kimbria and Hieb. What wonderful comments and a great kickoff to the weekend celebration. Now we're going to follow Dr. Phillips' advice and have a little fun. In fact, so much fun that it's everyone's favorite part of the program. You've all been sitting a while and doing a lot of listening and watching. Now time to move around a bit and generate some more heat in this building. <laughs> I will introduce the undergraduate and graduate college delegates and the dean for each college, the Golisano Institute for Sustainability and the Center for Multidisciplinary Studies. As I do that, I ask the faculty, staff, and all candidates for delegates from that college who are in the audience, as well as their families and other guests, to stand and be recognized. The delegates will accept a symbolic diploma presented by their dean on behalf of the graduates of that college. Now, we want you to wildly cheer the accomplishments of the graduates for each college. And we actually view this as a kind of competition as to which college can generate the biggest display of celebration. Now, there's no awards or anything. It's just to have fun. So here we go. Greg Noyes, Hujara Musa, and Dean H. Fred Walker from the College of Applied Science and Technology. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Give him the, you gotta give him the. Okay. Not bad, we can do better. Fred, don't go away. Anna Rakovic and Dean Fred Walker from RIT Croatia. Let's all help Anna celebrate. Andre Jolie, Eric Irish, and Dean D.T. Ogilvy from the Saunders College of Business. Not bad, not bad. Benjamin Kelly, Alvina Krishnan, and Dean Andrew Sears from the B. Thomas Galasano College of Computing and Information Sciences. <laughs> Nick 
Nicholas Hensel, Joshua Locke, and Dean Harvey Palmer from the Kate Gleason College of Engineering. Garen Gagliastri, Timothy Fitzgerald, and Dean Daniel Orn from the College of Health Science and Technology. <laughs> Jacqueline Pitlart, Eve Mardart, Mar Mardini, and Dean Lorraine Justice from the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. Emerson, Pedro Benquez, and Dean James Weinbrake from the College of Liberal Arts. <laughs> well done. Shane, Ladi, Lou Ann Owens, and Professor Mary Boy from the Center for Multidisciplinary Studies. <laughs> Arif Hoti and Professor Boyd from the American University in Kosovo. Let's all help Arif celebrate. <laughs> now a wise provost before me gave me these words of advice. Jeremy, he said, never forget a college. And especially, Especially, never forget the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. Derek Landis, Matthew Annis, and Dean Gerald Buckley from NTID. <laughs> Kimbria Blake. David Principe, and Dean Sophia Makalakis from the College of Science. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, Aaron Ryan and Dr. Nabil Nasser from the Galasano Institute of Sustainability. Let's give it up. <laughs> Thank you. That was just great. You're all obviously very happy to graduate. And now, will all the 2014 candidates for degrees in the audience and on the stage please stand and remain standing. <laughs> members, <laughs> members of the Board of Trustees and President Dessler, I proudly present RIT's candidates for degrees for the year 2014. Thank you, Provost Hafner, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the State of New York and the Board of Trustees of Rochester Institute of Technology, I now confer upon you the degree to which you are entitled as certified by the faculty and as signified in the commencement bulletin with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of the graduates. Congratulations again 
to the class of 2014, we applaud your accomplishments and wish you the best in your future ventures. We come to the conclusion of the 2014 academic convocation. We ask that the audience remain seated until the platform party, faculty, and graduates have left the room. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Just making sure <laughs> the, have left the room. The platform party will exit down the main aisles. The graduates will exit through the doors they entered. Families, you may meet your student just outside this building to the north at the bottom of the hill with our proud RIT and Tiger Paws emblazoned. And ushers are on hand to direct you. And we look forward to seeing you again at the college commencement ceremonies. To close the convocation, please stand for the singing of RIT's alma mater by Professor Jenkins, Timothy Holmes, Malik Paris, Lauren Egan, and Nicholas Shaw, accompanied by Professor Shell. You will find the words on the last page of your program. Thank you again for being part of the celebration, and do enjoy the weekend.
For some, universities mean ivy-covered buildings or football games or many exams. But today, this university is all about transforming lives, building careers, and making a profound impact. Good morning. I am Dr. Jeremy Hafner, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at RIT. It is my pleasure to welcome you today as we kick off Commencement Weekend 2014 with this university celebration of our graduates in the class of 2014. Congratulations to all of you. And now I invite all of us to please stand for the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation given by Eli Bass, Hillel, Pro Hillel Pro Program Director for the Center of Religious Life. Blessed are you, O oh God, who enables all of us to come together to celebrate this moment of accomplishment and transition. God, we seek your blessing on these graduates. As they continue their journeys, may they continue in their process of discovery. Help them to grow in knowledge, character, and spirit. Thank you for the blessing of parents. 